Monster. Hey everybody, and welcome to a Wednesday episode of The Hogside. Wednesday for us, probably Thursday or Friday for you. Welcome to the show. It's a full crew. Jamal is back from his Thanksgiving slash birthday slash whatever other expedition he was on. Great. Uh, this is what three shows we figured out tomorrow, but I hope you're a little recharged after having some fun. Yeah, man. I'm not a little bored out of Alabama. Um, really? You know, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why I, I did. I went boar hunting down to Alabama for my birthday. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, I, I just picked up a gun and went and went to go went to go find some 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 people to hunt with. I can't. I can honestly say that's might be the very last thing I expected to hear you say tonight. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm I'm actually I'm actually glad that you said that because it, it indicates that you know me a little bit, and that was not what happened in Alabama. I went down there. <laughs> I went down there with my girlfriend. We just had a her, her mom lives down in Alabama. So uh-huh. um we we went down there for Thanksgiving. And uh we had some we had some good old th- uh traditional Thanksgiving food with a with a little dash of uh Jamaican. So it was it was really good. So some See, spicy I've heard Jamaican food is really good, but I'm like violently opposed to all things spicy food. And so I don't think I could really eat much Jamaican. Yeah. <laughs> that is unfortunate. Um, one thing I will tell you is um, there are other like so oxtail right. is something that I would t- I would recommend to you because they don't they don't make oxtail spicy. That's just beef. That's just that's all that is. It's it's stewed um, usually too. Yeah. So so you're you're fine with with oxtail. It's the curry and the jerk is what you want to stay away from but you can do oxtail that is jamaican um just make sure obviously we know where you live make sure you you do your googles find a reputable area get you some oxtail <laughs> with, with rice and peas and some cabbage i'll try it give it a, give it a shot man have you ever had oxtail i don't think i have no and just to put things into perspective i'm not kidding when i say I, i'm really anti-spice like i get wings plain no sauce at all, and the mild sauce at Taco Bell is way too spicy for me. That's the level of uh, anti-hot food I am. Yeah. Look, I, I got a friend who's just like that, so I, I, I complete. Well, no, not to your degree. He just doesn't like. He must. He stays away from the jerk and he, hot sauce ain't really his thing either. Um, but give it a shot. Um, it's it's really not bad. I would just say go for the oxtail, man. Mm-hmm. Um, but but yeah, I was down. I was down there for what? Uh, four or five days. Four yeah. or five days, um, and got to watch the game down there. Watch the team, uh, the football team beat up on the the Cowboys, and uh, it just is is good when you you're actually not alone in terms of uh, being the only fan there. So I had a, I had a couple other people in there that was uh, invested in the game like I was. So that's cool. It was it was a pretty good week. That's yeah. cool. And I love I love Jamaican food. Uh, I love yeah. jerk chicken. Man, love me some jerk chicken. I love it. Yeah, I do too. Man. So, jerk I, chicken, did they do jerk, tur- jerk turkey or anything? No, we uh, we we had a smoked turkey, just traditional smoke smoked okay. turkey, cool. like in the smoker. Uh, I I never had smoked uh, smoked turkey before. Um, oh, that's how I love and, to do it. Yeah. So afterwards, I told I told my mom, I called her. I was like, look, I don't care what we do this Christmas, but moving forward in life. We're not fixing a turkey any other way mm-hmm. but using a smoker. That's the only way we're going to fix a turkey from now on because like it was it was incredible. Um yeah. again, that was my first time having it. So for people who's listening, like I get I, I, I smoke my turkeys all the time. Well, guess what? I, I have it. It's my first experience with it. So well, Jamal, I, allow, off, allow me to enjoy myself. <laughs> offline, if you want some uh turkey smoking and grilling recipes you know like let me know because i've done it a b- bunch of times now and i'm pretty good at it so if there's well, anything well, else is more of a nerd about than football it's food yeah well, well look, and especially me, grilling yeah yeah grilling that's that's my well you know alex and, and steve y'all follow me on twitter i, I post it occasionally yeah but um in terms i'm of the proud smoke, to say i don't follow anybody on twitter anymore no no steve's <laughs> Jamal, yes. you might have missed it. I'm I've taken over our Twitter at this point. Oh no, I know. Because when you said <laughs> when we talked about the mimosas thing, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I got the alert, uh, <laughs> but I, I didn't I didn't see the initial until like you you put until I read the whole thing. But when I saw the alert, 
I was like, Hawk Tie. Ain't no, ain't no way in hell this this is Steve. So right. I was like, I, I, I noticed. I noticed. What is a mimosa? Is that champagne and orange juice? Is yes. that what it yeah. is? Yeah, yeah he was asking how many it takes to really should it take for you to get drunk, and I, I said like six. Oh so. God, I have for me it'd be one right. because you don't I've have never you don't drink. drank in my yeah. life. So you don't yeah. Drink it yeah. So yeah, no, nah, I, I get it, man. But I, what what I will do is I'll, I'll keep that in mind uh, when we actually get the smoker because I'm gonna be brand new to it. Okay. I, I don't know anything about the smoker. Um, that's the one thing I told I told her. Uh, we're gonna be experimenting throughout the year because when Thanksgiving comes, we need to be on it and know how to smoke smoke a turkey. <laughs> we'll we'll, t- we'll talk about it after after the show because I, yeah, I I'm can starting give some to yawn tips here because this is yeah. food and yeah. food does yeah. not, I'm not on the food hour. Thank Steve God. only does this. Steve yeah, only yeah, does we'll, my food. we'll talk later, Jamal, about that because you have a far more exciting thing that you did than food yesterday, Alex. That we want to talk about. Okay, yeah, we should probably start with that because the game is just going to be us getting our ass kicked. So let's talk about the <laughs> cool thing that happened yesterday. Um, and it kind of came at us out of the blue, what, two, three days ago. We got an email or a message uh, on Twitter from the football team. Uh, their account sent us this email saying, Jason Wright wants to meet with, he's doing something he's calling Fansgiving. He wants to meet with a couple people uh, who are like hardcore fans of the team, and we'd like you to be involved. And they and they just sent us that and said, send us three questions. So... Steve, you and I both saw it at the same time because uh, even though you're not on our Twitter, you're still checking the messages like I am. Yeah, um, it comes over my email or right, my right. text. So we both react right away. We're like, all right, let's sit down and talk about this. This is awesome. Um, I guessed initially, and I think you did too, this was going to be, here's my three questions. And then the team will say, here's Alex with a question. And I'm sitting there nervously reading, and then they cut me off. I, I thought, I, honestly, I thought it might even be less than that, where yeah. he just said, this is from Alex, so this is from the Hogstar. Right, right, right. And, you know. But no. Uh, so this happened on December 1st at, uh, I think it was 4.30 we started. Uh, I hopped on around 4, because, you know, I'm always on early. <laughs> um, and I was talking with the producers and, you know, the social media people for a little bit, and uh it was myself. Let me. I have the list of all the different podcasts that were involved. Uh, they wanted to involve fan podcasts, basically, and have a one-on-one with Jason and the, you know podcasters. So the Washington Brawl guys were there. HT We Are podcast, Washington Realm, the Big Douglas Show, uh, the guys from the DC Tweet Team, formerly the Redskins Tweet Team, um, Burgundy Network. I think that covers just about everybody who all the so what there is might that? have been a couple one or two others in there, but that's the gist of it. Oh, uh, the Tay and Todd show, which I've I've never heard of, but they are very nice guys, um, and they I guess they're talking Washington football <laughs> with that name. Uh, it, it's very hard to find every podcast about our team now because some of them don't have names that you would suspect are football podcasts. Uh, so about a half dozen shows. Uh, most of them had one people there. I think, a, like, Tay and Todd were both there in the room together. Uh, one or two shows, I think they both hosts would show up. But regardless, it was Jason Wright and about a dozen of us sitting there just chatting the whole time. And they tried to start it out with the order of, oh, we want to cover the culture change, we want to cover uh, the new name, and we want to cover, I, I can't remember the other topic was off them that they mentioned but and they started off with let's go to this guy with a question let's go to you with a question but it wasn't they cut you off it was i would ask my question one of my questions was how has dan snyder dated been involved day to day now uh with jason in in place and jason gave an answer and then it was a back and forth about well what about this what about you know so When I asked, you know, what is Dan Snyder's involvement, he says, I talk to Dan once a week now. That's about how involved he is. If something comes up, it's more than once a week. Honestly, that might be the most encouraging thing to come out of this. And Mm -hmm. you gave me more of a rundown of the topics off the air than we'll probably cover here. But And Alex wrote a post about this. It's up on uh, the website if you want to read it. I wrote about it. I'm sure if you go to any of these guys now, they're all probably going to be writing about it, talking about it. So, yeah. Yeah, but, and the team told us at some point we're going to get some video, and if we do, right. we'll post it somehow yeah, yeah. one way or another. But but I, I think one of the most encouraging things I heard out of that isn't that Dan Snyder's just detached now, right. you know, or whatever. It's it's that 
it appears as though he trusts Jason. Well, two things. He trusts Jason enough to run this by himself, and he's kind of stepped off into what Alex described to me off the air as a board of directors kind of role. Right, exactly. Yeah. You know, and two, you know, Bruce Allen was an enabler of the worst kind, you know, horrible behavior, all of that. And that's not what obviously what Jason is at all. So I, I think what seems to me that we've graduated into the realm of dare we say it, normal organization with Jason right. around. And that's the most the single most encouraging thing of all to me. Right. So uh, I'll, I'll give you two examples of, you know, when we kind of were going back and forth. Uh, the first story he told was, uh, and I think I mentioned this to you yesterday, Steve, when you and I were chatting, but uh, he got a complaint. I don't, he didn't say from who, but he, he heard a complaint that the practice field is a mess. And especially after it rains, there's not proper drainage. So what does Jason do as, you know, team president? He, Ron, and uh, another, I can't remember who the other coach was, but one of the other coaches, they just go out to the field after a light rainstorm, and he's like, right away he knew this is not a good field. He was like, I would not run on this if I were a player still. I, I wouldn't feel safe playing on this surface. So he goes to Dan and says, we need to shell out some money to fix this right away. Unexpected expense. Those are the times when Dan Snyder still gets involved, when it's like, hey, we need to spend a f – I don't know what it would cost to fix a field, Steve. You might actually know, but it's probably a few no, million dollars to that. do I never irrigation. Came across... That's nothing they would want outside counsel involved in. They don't need me for that. That's true. But you, but you can imagine the cost of re-irrigating a football field, probably pretty pricey. Yeah, so, oh yeah, definitely. So, you know, Six-figure like, expense, at least. At least, so those are the things where Dan gets involved, and that's about it. Like, the day-to-day -day operations, they trust him to make those decisions now. It sounds like Dan literally is on his yacht more. I, I mean, I we said so. that in, like, a joking manner, you know, before, but it sounds like with Jason in place, Dan truly has stepped back. Right. And, and that's, he, uh, that's just great. The other tidbit is that uh, he, did, he does say that he loves – picking Dan's brains on things like marketing, because that's where Dan's background is. And the one thing he said that I found a little unexpected was that he's surprised by how much Dan is into, like, bold innovation these days in terms of ownership, which doesn't sound very Dan Snyder-like to any of us, I think. Uh, no, you're saying, so what, what did he mean when he said bold innovation? What does that mean? Just... He wants to hear the new ideas, uh, anything out that other teams aren't doing that people bring to him. He wants to hear about them to, you know, see if these ideas can work here. Such as, did he give examples? He didn't give specifics. Just, he, uh, Jason is very honest, but he will also, uh, he, he started out saying uh, this whole meeting, if there's stuff I can't talk about, I'm just going to tell you I can't talk about it. So, he, see, he's... It, you know, okay. obviously, Bruce Allen would never ever have done this. No, Bruce didn't even talk to Bruce didn't like talking to the reporters. Media, yeah, uh, more than once a year. You know, um, so this is such a huge culture change, and and the way this is kind of built to us, also, you know, to Alex in the room, not to speak for you, Alex, but is it, um, you know, Jason wants to sh show people that the culture is changing, and one of the right. ways he's doing that is being more accessible because we're like sort of fringy media. I mean, we're credentialed for some things, but we're not a full-time media they, they outlet. Do, they credential us for stuff that is kind of a gimme. Uh, let's be honest. You know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and they'll send us a training camp and the draft stuff and things right. like that, but they, they don't view us as like day-to-day -day media, nor should they, because we're not. We're right. not that. Right. And they don't have to talk to us, but Jason has chosen to talk to us, um, and that really shows that I think he's interested in really showing the world that this is a new day, and, and that ought to be music to everybody's ears out there. I think uh, the larger thing I got from this is, yes, exactly that, what you said, but also I think he knows that he's not a lifelong Redskins fan. He's not some guy who you know is a career NFL guy either. I think he's trying to get an understanding for this market, the fan base, uh, I mean, he's got a huge task with the name change and the stadium going on. Yeah. Like, I think he's trying to gauge where the public is on that. He, I mean, like, he talks about a lot of that stuff in a very big-picture point of view. I, I think his uh, 
I, I, when when I wrote the article, Steve rejected my initial title, but it was kind of what yeah. he said his mantra is, and that's uh, being uh, basically being bold, being direct with people. Uh, he, he's like, I don't have time for people who want to just play, you know, politics, play games in the office space. If that's where they are, they're not. We're not keeping oh, them very. Or long. in the case of the prior regime, literally playing golf in the office while drinking Coors Light. Right. right. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, how many questions were I asked about the name? Um, and how many did he answer? We didn't. That, add... that was you, unique to you. Okay, so nothing unique was asked. Here's the interesting thing: the name discussion started not with us asking him questions, with him asking us questions. Uh, he wanted to know what people thought of where they were in the name process. Not he, he didn't ask anything stupid like, what name did you guys like? Because, you know, I, I don't think they're at that point yet. Um, and, and frankly, you, you don't just get a bunch of fanboys and ask them to pick a name and that's that. Like, he, he wants it's to... It's a whole branding effort. Yeah, it's yeah, a, yeah. There's, a, there's a strategy to this. Uh, I mean, he did mention that he's recently talked to like something like 50 alumni former players to get their get thoughts on what the name should be and he's talking with you know he is talking i mean you know they do the fan polls things like that but they're trying to get a lot of feedback on it it sounded like he confirmed what some really really brilliant guy named steve has been saying which is that it's going to take a while yep you know because you don't just whip this kind of stuff up from a legal perspective and from a business perspective it takes a while right and it sounds and that's what i've been saying is what jason confirmed it sounded like yesterday oh, yeah. so he, don't he expect said... this to happen anytime soon one of the tidbits he said which i think you would agree with completely steve is if they don't do this right and they announce a name before they have the merch all ready and they have everything, it's a disaster. It's a disaster. Yeah. yeah. I, the way he put it was, I don't want to put a name out there and then there's, you know, everybody who can screen print has 50 shirts out there with different logos. Here's, an, here's like what that. would happen. If you ever go to, you know, the Metallica concert. Right. And you see the guys in the parking lot. Selling knockoffs, got exactly. crappy knockoff shirts. Yeah. That's what you and don't that's want. Just that, that is what would happen only on a national scale, and it would just be a total disaster. The NFL would never let it happen. It, so, yeah, I mean, it's they've got to get the trademarks filed, approved, all right, of that right. before he, he, they can he's do very anything. very upfront about all that. Um, but, no, his, his perspective was more like what is important to you in a name. And so, like, my response was don't pick a name that's generic. Pick a name that – fits this dc region and if you like were to hypothetically move the team it doesn't make sense to keep the name anymore uh you know like and that's not easy because i think a lot of names are generally generic but my my example was in the xfl you had the dc defenders you could take that name and put it anywhere you know like it a, it, it's a very generic name and i know it was nice because it had alliteration but that was literally all i had um and same with like the valor in the arena league they literally just picked that team and moved them to San Antonio. Didn't even change the logo, even though it has a DC flag in it. Well, it's because I mean, the, yeah, yeah they're, they're playing the, in the low rent. Right, right, exactly. You know, but league. again, if you pick a terrible generic name, it can go anywhere, and that's no good. Um, that doesn't make it easier to find a name, but that was kind of my two cents. Uh, I can't remember who it was. Uh, let me see if I wrote down who. Oh, he's lucky Maurice... I wasn't there. I put my answer probably would have been I want Redskins back. Yeah, of course. But I think the whole preface of the conversation was Redskins isn't coming back. Get over I, it. I'm yeah. not good at holding my mouth though. You know yeah, this I know. about me. <laughs> I know. I, I there were probably a few times I should have kept my mouth shut and I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> um not on the name chain stuff, but uh, I, I may have made a joke when he's like, well, we love all the different podcasts. I was like, really? Because I've heard some of them. There, Some of these are all, not these guys here, but some are awful. <laughs> um, yeah, I, Steve I, knows I, who I'm talking I, about. Oh, yeah. I, was, I hope he laughed with you. He did. He did. <laughs> it, it was obviously meant as a joke, and every, yeah. I think everyone took it. It was the guy from DC Tweet Team, Maurice Hawkins, who's uh, – he was all about just – it's not so much about the name, it's about like finding a good logo and icon that, you know, you actually are happy to wear on a shirt and stuff like that, which I yeah. thought was an interesting. He he made a very impassioned speech about that. Uh, like a 10-minute monologue about why you need a good logo. <laughs> I um, get it. I mean, I don't I don't know how long it took for Terrapin fans to get used to wearing a turtle on their shirt. 
So I mean, I, I understand. I, I don't. There's some. There's some logos and and symbols and or animals that like you just. It's gonna take some while to get used to. Yeah, no, no offense. No offense to Terrible fans. I'm just saying. Like, think about when they first came out and they said that they were a turtle. Like, right. Just think about. It. Right. It took, probably took a little while. <laughs> right. Doesn't Stanford use a tree now? Yeah. Yeah. yeah they use That's a tree. That's just the worst. Well, I mean, I think it's the California Redwood concept, but still. Yeah, I'm with you. It's a weird logo. And, and it's even weirder mascot that they have a guy in, like, a Christmas tree outfit on the sideline. It's horrible. Uh, and that's what you get when you get California liberals in charge. But go ahead. Anyway. Yeah, we'll, yeah. So I'll delete that comment. <laughs> <laughs> um, let, but, okay, so we talked about that. We did talk about the stadium a little. He had no updates about the stadium, just so people know that uh, right ahead, right off the bat. He, he's got this spiel now, and I've heard him say it a few times, I'm sure anyone who's paid attention has, that it's not just about building a stadium, they want to build a whole entertainment complex, and they need to know how it's going to impact the community where it's built, things like that. Um, one of the things that I loved, and uh, this is me tooting my own horn for a second, if he heard ideas he liked from people, he kind of would stop the meeting for a second and start writing them down. Tell us about the Alex East idea. Okay, so the one idea I had that I noticed he liked was when we were talking about the stadium, I said, hey, you know they're tearing down RFK in a year or two. That was the heart of the Washington Redskins organization for a long time. And you guys really should do something to commemorate it before it's torn down. And he's like, you know what, that's a good point. Wrote it down. You know? So I thought that was a good little... Yeah. So it's going to be the Alex Z seat sale or something. I don't know. I don't know what it. Well, I already know they're doing a seat sale. Rick told me that because he he's got an in. I, I've I've asked Rick, our buddy Rick Snyder. He's I think he's got an in with the DC Entertainment people. If he can get me a deal on the seat, you know that'd be great. Or, yeah, I, or maybe the old stretcher cart. <laughs> I would love to have one in my house. I'm not going to pay five hundred dollars for any seat ever. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand that. So so let me ask you. One more, one more question about this name thing. Yeah. Um, you want to hop back? What are your, cool. what are your, what are your impressions? Uh, in terms, because like for, prior to this meeting or this 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 conference call with this man, mm-hmm. um, I kind of felt like, and I still do. I haven't talked to him. Um, I don't know anything, but uh, I, I felt like the name was already in the bag. Like they knew what they were doing, um, and they they had their their mind made up, but they want to make sure that they. Uh, still speak to all audiences and and and, and uh, parties and stuff like that, stakeholders, and, and and make sure that they talk to them, just engage or make it seem like they're involved in this process, but they have a name already. Mm-hmm. I felt like that before this meeting, and I still kind of do to a degree. I just don't know like if it's like how far it shifted. Where do you come across after talking to him about this stuff? Um, and the branding, I the branding ideas and the importance of it all. Like, where, where do you stand? Actually, Jamal, I would say this is just my gut reaction from talk, hearing them. We already have heard them say they're not going to have a name next year because they they don't think they'll have this whole situation. It's I impossible don't, at this point. It's impossible. Yeah, logistically, yeah. it's impossible. I won't be surprised if this takes three or four years. Like that that's the pace he seems to be moving at in my mind in terms People of need to understand that when you start an expansion team, you don't just snap your fingers and in three months they're playing. Right. It starts years ahead of time. I have been involved in this. It starts right. years ahead of time and the branding takes a long time to do. So even if they had a name today, mm-hmm. Realistically, it might be 2022 before you could really get it all done in well, a proper manner. And, and frankly, with an expansion expansion team, not a relocation or, right. in this case, we're changing name, which has never happened in the NFL. It's happened in other sports like basketball. But um, when you're doing this, you're talking, uh, I think, an even more nuanced process because with an expansion team like the Panthers or the Jaguars, they just – Eventually, they just kind of landed on those names. You know, like, these were animals that were native to the area. We're done. That, that's it. Like, the, And they didn't have fan stakeholders yet. Like, that that wasn't an issue. There's no multiple generations of Jaguars fans still, you know. I, honestly, the best example I can think of is the Washington uh, Bullets. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the Bullets, the Charlotte teams have changed names a hundred times now. Yeah, but seems. even those, yeah, yeah, they have. In basketball, they've gone from the 
th- there's been multiple cities, different franchises that have had Hornets, I think. Well, yeah, but, they were the Hornets, then they moved to New Orleans, and then they became the Pelicans, and then the Hornets went back to... Or yeah, the Hornets right, something back. like that. Yeah. But but I don't think there's been any franchise I can think of, and correct me if I'm wrong here, people, but that have that has had a more deep-seated and beloved name than Redskins that has disappeared without the franchise leaving. Um... I can't think of one. Um, not the Wizards mo- not weren't in the in modern time. Cla- the Bullets weren't in that class. No, no, no. Um, and nor were the Hornets. I mean, the Hornets were. Oh. A, I mean, they were a fairly well-known, fairly popular team when they left. Yeah, um, but it's nothing like eighty years of Redskins. No, history, and, and in know? that case, again, the Hornets left, and then the new team became the Bobcats, like and then changed five back. years. Yeah. yeah, of history. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um. There, there might be teams, Steve, that you and I aren't thinking of that are old timey, like baseball teams, you know. But, you know, that, but, uh, yeah. But there's not an obvious example that no, really jumps there's out no of obvious me off the top of my head. No yeah. obvious ones. Mm-hmm. Um, so it, 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 it is a unique situation, and so that's why I wouldn't be surprised if it takes longer. And Jamal, I know what you're kind of thinking that they probably have something in the back. I think they did at one point, but I think with Jason Wright now in charge of it. I think he's way more take your time, do it right, be open uh, to ideas, that kind of thing. I mean, look, obviously they have a list in the Yeah, yeah, they have to. Yeah, and obviously, like, Dan Snyder has got a favorite in mind or a couple, a handful of favorites because ultimately it's his decision. Um, Whether or not it's settled and done, who knows? You Mm -hmm. know, but I have to think that there's, there's some leading contenders yeah, out there we just don't know what the list is. The the only thing he has that Jason said and they've said repeatedly they're not changing the colors. Like they are steadfast on burgundy and gold. Thank goodness. Yeah, and uh, there was some talk about uniforms at one point, and uh, you know, like they might do some tweaks to the uniforms until they figure out a name here and there. Um, I don't think anything major, but they're that's when he's like, we're keeping burgundy and gold, and I kind of made the correct. Can you actually go to burgundy and gold? Because right now we're wearing red and yellow, which, you know. <laughs> right now we look like the USC Trojans. I yeah, a little too much. <laughs> you know. The Trojans. Yeah. Okay. Which, you know, not a bad look, but. Maybe we need to be the Washington Trojans and really just completely, you know, copy <laughs> USC. Well, well, look, the way they beat down Dallas on, on Thursday, they can keep looking the way they, they want to look. As long right. as they went in, you know, I, I may, I may, look, I like this, there's no logo, these numbers on the helmet type deal. I may turn around and end up liking it if they keep winning. But, you know, we're playing Pittsburgh this week, right, Jamal? Uh, yeah, so that's, that's why, that's why I, what I was, what I was going to say is it's probably not going to last long. <laughs> no, 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 no. No. This little winning streak might not keep going another yeah. week. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, the, like when they wore the retro uniforms a few weeks ago, that everyone likes that, you know. And I think they they want to keep wearing throwbacks even without the you know Redskins logo on there or whatever, which is going to be weird. But you know they they said that that's something they want to do. I would prefer them not to, but well, like if they went back and wore thing. like the spear thing that they wore, what was that twenty years ago? Yeah, but are they really going to do the spear thing? It's that's got an Indian slash Native American reference, you know, imagery. I mean, I don't think they're going to do that. Well, I don't know if they will. I I just know he said they liked bringing those retro yeah, uniforms out. Which yeah. Also, marketing wise, makes sense. You know, you make money off of them. A few extra, few extra bucks. Yeah. Yeah. Why not? Um. All right. Do you guys want to keep talking about this? I realize we're already at a half hour, but we... no. I, I, we need I'm to transition. do. Transition. Get to it. I was trying to transition us if you had let it happen, yeah. Alex, by mentioning the Steelers, <laughs> but instead you just blew it right out of the water. Well, you right that's fine. I, I would like somebody to thank me for letting you go to this thing. Well, it was in the, and surrendering you said it was in the middle place. of your work day. It was. <laughs> I didn't fight it. I didn't argue. I said you were the best person for this. Right. And it was I thanked. No. No, because I because it's right. I was the best person for it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, no, if Jamal Fine. wanted to do it, I would have absolutely said Jamal should do it. Cause... We'll, f- we'll fight about it later. Yeah. yeah. Look, I, I got dibs on the next opportunity. Sure. Well, <laughs> now that we know that, like, you know, some of these podcasts had, like, three people sitting there, like, we'll just all do it. I don't care. Oh, don't... so they had, oh, they probably had one person ask and, and then the other two attend. Because they, they would have been smart to, like, transcribe though? it, like, do, like, live tweets of the actual, um, the conference. 
Q and A, whatever that was. Yeah, I, well, I mean, there there was there was no live tweets or anything like that. This was, you know, they're gonna edit the two hours of video. Oh, and let me. No, no, no. I'm not saying. No, I'm saying live tweeting, as in we're transcribing the interview. Oh, like, yeah, yeah. I, so I, not necessarily like recording the video. I don't know how they would feel about that because you know. It, it is the team's property. They're going to yeah, do something I mean, with video. We, but, when we were approached about this, we didn't really know what they were doing, why they were doing it. You know, it sounded like a great opportunity, and we really didn't want to kind of push the envelope, you know, by doing something they didn't want to do and not get invited back next time. Right, right, you know? right. And I made sure to bite my tongue on a few things so that I don't make an ass out of myself. Because, you know, that could happen with me. There's a first for everything, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> um, but... Yeah, did so you next play time... in the tape of you drunkenly bashing Dan Snyder? No, I did not do that. <laughs> I did not do that. I, I was there were like forty times where I wanted to ask another, you know, stupid question, make a request of like, hey, can you guys do a practice on the National Mall or you know something stupid? <laughs> and I, I just held my tongue. So thank you. Yes. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, next time I think we'll all try and get in there. It, since... what, were they on different? Yeah, we'll. Yeah, t- yeah, yeah, people were on be... different channels so yeah yeah um, let's get to the Steelers yeah let's get to the Steelers game all right so we're gonna go get our ass kicked by the Pittsburgh Steelers on Monday guys and <laughs> um it's not gonna be pretty because uh the Steelers just finished playing tonight and it wasn't pretty um but now they're gonna be mad because they looked like chumps against the backups of the Ravens um even though they won <laughs> they you know RG3 threw for 30 something yards and you know, somehow the Ford Ravens were still thing. in that game till the end. They only had like 10 attempts, too, yeah, or something like yeah. that. Yeah, that dude's done. Look, here's the thing, okay? If you haven't watched the Steelers all year, understand this. This team is absolutely brutal on quarterbacks. Right. The, they are these guys are a nightmare. Thing. They are, I don't have, because the game just ended, I don't have all the stats for the season in front, you know, right. accumulating in front of me, but just understand that they are number one in sacks. They are number one in quarterback pressures, in knockdowns, sack percentage, pressure percentage, anything relating to making a quarterback uncomfortable, they are leading the NFL in. Yep. You know, they, they are number one in, in the NFL in points against. Mm-hmm. You know, they're up there in yardage. They're not quite as good against the run as they are against the pass statistically, but they are still brutal. I, I mean, this is a game that... If Washington is going to have any chance at all, number one, they're going to have to run the ball effectively mm-hmm. because this makeshift offensive line that Washington's got going with, you know, Morgan Moses on the wrong side and some guy named David Sharp on the other and Cornelius Lucas, whoever he is, all that, that's not going to work. No. The two ends, Watt and Dupree, have got, before this game against the Ravens, 17 sacks between them. I well, don't think uh, they got Dupree a sack. Dupree just got hurt, though. He, okay. I think he's done. He he got an ACL. Yeah, Dupree injury. heard uh, NC, uh, yeah. I, must, I said NCL in my mind. <laughs> yeah, he heard his. Uh, he heard his knee like okay. towards the tail end of the game. Okay, well, I yeah. Again, I wasn't able to watch the game. That just yeah. happened. So that's news. But TJ Watt, nine yeah. sacks already. Just, just as scary. <laughs> yeah, it's more scary probably. So this is a game that. Um, they're going to have to run the ball and run the ball some more because if you want, if you know, if you want to see Alex Smith pass for 160 yards again, it might not even be that good against yeah. the Steelers. Yeah, I, I would say, uh, from what I saw today, you, you're, any passing attempts are going to be quick. It, this is going to be a dink and dunk. Uh, like, I don't even think you get to three-step drops sometimes <laughs> against the Steelers. But Dupree got hurt today, huh? Yeah. 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 Um, the, good thing, the good thing with this offense, though, uh, and I've said this quite a few times, like, Alex Smith has uh, a little variety. He has a little flavor to his to his game this year, um, mm-hmm. and, and and it helps because uh, the running backs that that he has in his uh, at his disposal um, allows him to to work different levels of the field. I don't. We expect him to get the ball out quick. I think Pittsburgh is going to know that as well, so they're going to try and take away those options. But at the same time, he has a guy in Terry McLaurin where he can challenge the defense and, and feel comfortable doing it. He can challenge the defense uh, in the short, I mean, the intermediate to deep. Right. Excuse me. Um, the, the intermediate to deep, and he can get them off, off of uh, uh, the, the, short, the short short down and distances, or excuse me, short, short yardage areas of the field. So, um, well, I agree that 
they're going to look to get the ball out quick. Uh, I, I think Alex Smith is a little he's he's pretty comfortable um, in the situation that, with the situation that he has with this this roster. I mean, if there's anybody that's tailor made for this, it's probably him. Yeah, you know, um, the other thing about the Steelers defense is wanted to point out is that Minka Fitzpatrick is a free safety. Mm-hmm. Minka is a first team All Pro. He's a ball hawk. He's an outstanding player. Yep. He's not a guy. I I think it's a key matchup. Honestly, is Alex Smith in his eyes and play action versus Minka Fitzpatrick. Because if you're going to go downfield in any way at all, you've got to get Minka, you know, uh, you know, off of, off of center, so to speak. And that's going to be largely on Alex Smith. Um, so I think that's actually a kind of a key battle to watch well, is how well he can try to manipulate the safeties deep. On that point though, uh, I'm going to just assume Pittsburgh's going to ro- roll Fitzpatrick towards Terry most of the game. I guess. I mean, you would think. it would be my first instinct as a defensive mind would be put your best safety on Terry's side and kind of like have him shadow that guy because that'll contain him. But uh, that you want to could... allocate two resources on Terry? Because um, I'm asking um, because, uh, you know, you still got Joe Hayden out there. So yeah. um, now I'm not saying Joe Hayden can shut down Terry by himself, but it's like if you allocate two, two people – um, on Terry, uh, I'm not saying we got the best weapons in the world, but who, like, are you going to, who, who's going to help cover the tight end and the running back? That's all I'm going to Yeah, I mean, you're going to kind of be forced to leave a safety and linebackers on those guys, obviously. But, yeah. uh, I mean, I don't know. Personally, I, I don't understand why any defensive coordinator wouldn't put their best safety over Terry and, you know, whatever corner is there. You know, if they play yeah. one-on-one versus, you know, left-right, you know, that's on them. But, yeah, you know, that, I, I'm just thinking basic defensive scheme, cover their very, very good receiver. <laughs> you know, because, yeah. look, agree. I mean, yes, this is the Steelers, and we just got done talking about how, you know, the ball's got to come out quick and run game and all that stuff. But right. you can't exist in the NFL never going downfield, even no, against no, the you Steelers. Have you have to keep them honest, and that's going to take – um, probably Terry McLaurin, and hence the problem with, as Jamal said, Joe Hayden, mm-hmm. Minka Fitzpatrick. They've got talent. This is the best defense in football, okay? Yes. This is the number one defense in football. Yes, I don't think they're quite as good against the run, but this is they're, this is the best. Um, so this might look like sort of like some of these early games we played in this season against the Ravens and some, mm-hmm. you know, when they just don't look that good. Granted, it's a different quarterback, but I don't know if we can reasonably expect – what we've seen it in the last two weeks against the Steelers. Oh, no, we absolutely shouldn't. I- I'm expecting an ugly game from this offense. Uh, like, you you have to, like I, I said initially, you got to get it out quick. That means you've got to not just work these uh, res- uh, running backs into the receiving game. You got to get back to your slot guys. You got to, you know, work the tight end a little bit. Uh, the one problem we have, really, is that our tight end is not a short yardage tight end right now. He, like, you know... He he's a big play all or nothing fifty fifty guy, right? Like, you know, he doesn't. You, you don't. He, he's not a safety valve at all. For, I think he's more like a twenty five seventy five guy. Yeah. Okay. Fair <laughs> not enough. a fifty fifty guy. <laughs> Let's go thirty five. Okay. You know. <laughs> uh, fine. Thirty five. Yeah. Here's the other thing: the Steelers, at least going into this game, were had the best turnover margin in the NFL. Yeah. They were plus twelve headed into the Ravens, and I think they were one-for-one one against the Ravens, if I recall, So from what little I saw. So I, I think they're probably still plus 12. Um, point is, they've got a bunch of ball hawks. They've, get, they've gotten a ton of interceptions. They're leading the NFL in interceptions. Yeah. So we can, also can't have Alex Smith have these brain dumps that we've seen a couple times over the past um, couple weeks. They, they, they cannot afford to hand over the ball to the Pittsburgh Steelers. No. And they are going to be out there challenging Alex Smith. Yep. In the passing game. Yep. Uh, all right. So on the other side of the ball, because uh, I think we got to get to the you know Steelers offense. As even though they're a twelve and O team right now, or eleven and O, um, this offense doesn't scare me nearly as much as some other teams that have gone undefeated this long. They put thirty eight points up against the Eagles. Yeah, I know. So it's the Eagles. The Eagles are also terrible. They put nineteen <laughs> up against the Ravens. 
And the Ravens 38 have a good against defense. the Browns, 36 against the Bengals. Yeah. How are their defenses? How's our defense? At least middle of the pack. Theirs are not. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the Eagles I, might yeah. be one of the worst teams in the league at this point. I, 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 I well, the give... Eagles' defense is, is somewhat – they're decent. They're not, they're not a terrible defense. Yeah, I guess I the think... Eagles, it's fair. Their offense is the issue more. What was going to say, Steve? Uh, I don't even remember. Go ahead. <laughs> I'm just babbling. Um, no, no, I was, I was going to say that um, I think the the conversation here is what Pittsburgh has been doing recently, um, and I think the in recent terms, I've noticed like a few weeks now. Um, you got to go to even to the Jacksonville game as well. Uh, they aren't getting off to the best of starts. Um, and they're having their their offense does help them out. Like that is the strength. Well, not the strength, but the that is a a, a huge complement to their to the strength of their team, which is their defense. Um, but uh, when you're when you're talking about that Pittsburgh offense, um, trying to keep them out of rhythm and starting off early, like not allowing them to 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 get to a groove and find their groove early on. Um, that's that's going to be uh, key for anybody. But at the same time, when it comes to Washington, you have to find a way to get home to uh, on Big Ben. Like you're gonna you're gonna be able to, to to mitigate the issues. I think if Addis, did you happen to see the whole game to, today against Baltimore? Uh, I saw. I, I missed the first quarter. I, I watched. Okay. I, I thought it started later than it did. I, I forgot I saw that was none of it. Yeah. Okay. So so I'm just I'm just asking out of out of curiosity because you. So it, as long as you saw the game, you saw what they were doing offensively with the the wide receivers. They did a lot of empty empty back sets. There was a lot of Big yep. Ben um, Dolo back there in the backfield. He was by himself. Um, they've they've and, done that a lot over the last recent years with him. Yeah, and and in attempt to to help mitigate the the pass rush and to help uh, eliminate uh, uh, what's the word uh, to help. El- I guess to, to help Big Ben out because you, you can't their, disguise their O line is not they're their five o, wide, yeah. Yes, and their O line isn't that isn't really that good. Like no. when they have to 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 give him a few extra seconds, it's not going to happen. Um, yeah, so with so, that being with that being said, you just have to you have to make sure you get home and get there quick and be mm-hmm. consistent because um, it's going to take a full back end to front end effort to to try and stop this Pittsburgh offense. Yeah. So. Um... The offensive line is worth, I think, a point to raise. And the re- the effect of the offensive line not being very good is the run game isn't that great for no. the Steelers. They, they can wear They're, you down. That, that's what they did yeah. in Baltimore today. Like James Conner's averaging 4.4 yards per attempt. He's their leading running back. And you remember, he's the guy who replaced – who's the crazy guy who's now with Bell. the Jets. Le'Veon. Yeah, thank you. Le'Veon mm-hmm. Bell. Um, this is really a passing offense. It's really Big Ben passing offense. If you look at what they do on on in the passing game, it's Juju Smith Schuster, which is an who's an elite yeah. elite receiver. Deontay Johnson, not too far behind him, and then Chase Claypool, who is I guess there is their slot guy. Um, those are the receivers that Big Ben relies on. Juju Smith Schuster is a handful. Yes, and so is is Johnson. So I, I think this is another yet another game Clay, where Clay is their number one. I mean, I, I said Clay Chase, um, Chase Claypool is their number one um, in terms of production yardage. from a production standpoint. Yeah, yardage wise, uh, that's what I'm saying. Those three guys are a handful, yeah. and I think uh, Kendall Fuller and Ronald Darby are going to have uh, have you know their hands full. And I don't. This is not a game again where you can have a bunch of weird mix ups with the safeties don't know what they're doing and you know people people are mixing up zone coverages. These those three receivers will kill you. And Big Ben is obviously an experienced you know vet Super Bowl winner. He will kill you in if you the Redskins mistake, or yeah. Washington does this kind of thing. Yeah, it, like they've been doing. I, I mean, the one thing that kind of helps you with Big Ben is he is, he's always been a statue and as he's gotten older he's even more of a I'm just going to stand right here in this spot and this is where I'm making my throw. He doesn't move very much. Not really. And and all three of those receivers are about the same in yardage wise. I mean, yeah. uh, Clay Claypool's at 559 this is before the Ravens game. Um 559 Deontay Johnson, 537 yards. Uh, Smith Schuster, 535. You know, targets 
uh, he's targeting Deontay Johnson a little bit more than the other two, but um, it's the it's those three guys, and, and they're all talented receivers, and and that's how Pittsburgh, you know, earns their money, so to speak, mm-hmm. is mm-hmm. the passing game and those three guys. So it's an important, it's it's important to um, have a solid secondary this week. And listen, I mean, Big Ben hadn't been sacked much, right? You know, but sure would be nice. He's only had ten sacks all year, but before the Ravens again. But it sure would be nice to put him on the ground a few times. Yeah, it, it sure seems like during the game today, uh, the Ravens game, they were either running a spread offense, five wide shotgun, or they were in some kind of power formation. They they don't do anything like in between anymore. It's either Power Eye or Texas Tech. Right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Which, by the way, that's a very effective offense if you're you know if you have the players you can pull for it, it off. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh... It's, it, it'll be interesting. Um, I actually think that this is one of the games where uh, Washington is, for the past, when, they, when they're when they playing competent teams, um, excluding excluding the, the Lions, they suck. Um, competent teams, uh, they have gotten off to terrible starts in the game. Yeah. Um, and I think this is one of those games because of circumstances um, granted, Pittsburgh is a little upset, and they have not they acknowledged it post game. Of, of they they're aware of the slow starts that they had these past few weeks, and they had another one this week. Um, they're aware of it, and they're trying to work to address it. However, this is one of those opportunities where Washington has uh, a possibility to get off to a quick start mm-hmm. and get off to to a. I'm not saying you're going to be able to score 20 points in the first half against the Pittsburgh defense. But you have a chance to get a lead um, against these guys early on because of these slow starts. Like, you have the defense to keep yourself in the game. Washington needs to get at least a touchdown um, and a couple field goals in the first half because this isn't going to be like a – I don't think it's going to be a high-scoring game. And this is one of those – like I said, it's one of those games where you're going to have to step up in. Um, I'm not saying they're going to win it, but at the same time – you're going to give yourself a fighting chance against a team who's struggling right now well, in terms so, of starting off as. So, so, Jamal, then what is your final prediction for this game score-wise that, then? Truth be told, I, I can see it literally being 21-14 or 21-17 or 24-17. Pittsburgh, like I, I assume, for all those? Yes, Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh. Yeah. I, I, I don't see them getting close to the 30s. Mm-hmm. Um I don't see like a 28 or 31 or something like that. I'm seeing two touchdowns and maybe a touchdown late. Like I, that's that's what I see. The the question is when do we get to our 14 or when do we get to our 17? Are we in it and we're trading we're trading blows and it's a defensive game or is it are they up 17-3 or 17-7 and they're controlling the game to that degree or or 14-14-3 or something? Are they controlling the game to a point where? We crawl back in it, and it right. makes it look good. Right. Um, I can I can see us holding them defensively, but I just don't know what our offense is going to do, and that's that's my concern. But I can I think they win twenty one. Um, I'm gonna just say twenty one fourteen for now. Okay, right. I guess my turn. Yeah, Steve, um, on you go. I'm not that optimistic. I'm not as optimistic as Jamal is. I mean, the Steelers have been just pounding pounding bad teams all year. They they get they they've been in a bunch of close games with better teams. And I think Jamal is probably where you're, where you're kind of getting at a little bit there. Um, but we're not a good team. Uh, we're better than we were earlier in the season for sure. But I don't think this game is going to be close. I think it's going to be one of these games where um, Washington may play well in the first half, but it's just going to get away from them in the second half. So I, I think um, the score will be something along the lines of – um, like thirty, like maybe thirty-one, seventeen, something like that, and the score won't look as close as the game felt. Mm. I, I'm, I'm torn on this. I, I think this match. I don't know. I'm gonna just throw out a final score in the end, but I really think this is gonna be a good way to, for us to gauge where the Alex Smith-led Washington Absolutely. team is. I mean, we yeah, we beat up Dallas. Dallas is terrible. They have an incompetent coach. This is the one of the most stable franchises that 
you, you could ever face. You know what this game is, Alex? This game is, if you've ever played youth baseball, I always go back to the youth baseball, and your team's on the rise and you move up a division to see mm-hmm. how you're playing against the really elite teams and you get pounded. Right. You know, most likely. That's sort of where Washington is right now, I think, with the Steelers. I, I think so, too. And uh, But it's going to be good to watch and kind of get a good idea of where this team is, what they need to do to actually be move from the cellar into, you know, something other than the cellar, the ground floor somewhere in the league, you know, maybe, maybe a raised, uh, English basement, something. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, we'll, we'll see. I don't think we win. I'm going to guess it's probably something like 30 to 21. You know, I, I, I think I, I won't, I don't think Pittsburgh will go much past the 30 mark. I'm hoping not, but it, to me, I'm more curious to see how the offense does versus this defense. You and I, our final scores weren't too far off. No, no. By the way, everybody, just so you know, if you've been living under a rock, this game is now Monday, right? not Sunday, because is the it Ravens... Is ABC slash ESPN? Do we know? It, well, the last announcement Probably going to be got... on Fox like it was NBC. Well, the last right. announcement we got from the NFL said network to be determined. Okay. Oh, okay. okay. So we don't know. And, and all of this happened because the Ravens, you know, had so many positive coronavirus tests. Right. They moved the game like three times to Wednesday. And so that's what happened. So we it's at 5 o'clock. We don't Monday. even know the network, which is no. Awful. It may be on like you know TikTok Live or something. For all I know, sure. this, but yeah, uh, well, it's going to be somewhere. on some vague network that like nobody gets. You know, yeah. Who knows? It'll be. Yeah, I don't know. But we'll, we, at some point, it'll be televised one somewhere. Or the other. Yeah. yeah, somewhere. All right, guys. Um, well, hopefully we can watch it, and it's not on you know some Lifetime, Amazon Prime, or something. Yeah. 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 Well, I can watch Amazon Hulu. Prime. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, hopefully it's not somewhere random that no one can see it. Uh, I hope everyone enjoys the game. I, I don't think we will get a win, but I hope it's at least fun to see. Uh, and, again, I-, I got to talk to Jason Wright for two hours, so go me. So that- <laughs> I- I've already won this week. You're welcome. Yes. That's a big week for you, man. <laughs> All right, guys, thanks very much. Uh, we'll see you after the game. Peace.